Hello and welcome. I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Talk Thursday. Joining us today is a man who makes things happen. He inspires people to dream and to do. He won Asia's Nobel Prize, the Magsaysay Award, for what he keeps doing today, building dreams, building homes, most recently in areas which left, which felt the most powerful storm to ever hit land, uh, Typhoon Yolanda, or Haiyan as the world knows it. His NGO, Gawad Kalinga, mobilized over a million volunteers in what they called their Bayani Challenge. Bayani means hero helping rebuild 1,200 homes, give away more than 600 boats to fishermen. Joining us in the studio today is Tony Melota. Tony, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Marisa. Maria. I'm, I'm honored to be here. <laughs> so tell me, uh, we talked about Yolanda and uh, Typhoon Haiyan. Uh, what is Gawad Kalinga doing there now? How would you describe the, the place today? Well, I, I guess uh, Gawad Kalinga is building hope. In, in, in areas in, in the Philippines, uh, especially after Haiyan, and uh, just uh, building hope uh, uh, by, uh, by through the, the greatness of the Filipino spirit, we realize that you know, the power of, of kindness is able to bring out also solidarity among Filipinos in times of great tragedies. And uh, it's amazing because uh, we are now starting to build in 68 towns all over Central Philippines. Mm -hmm. And we just concluded recently the, the amazing Bayani Challenge. We were hoping to raise a million volunteers in two months, starting April 9, but we were able to uh, gather 1.6 million volunteers, building homes, uh, repairing uh, schools, planting trees and mangroves, doing medical mission, uh, doing a lot of uh, support for, for the children in many of these, uh, of the uh, typhoon hit areas. So, you mean in this time when there's so much cynicism, you you talk about hope. I mean, how do you, how do you deal with the cynicism that is there now? And how do you attract people to actually do? Well, it has been our philosophy, you know, when bad things happen, just do more good. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and I guess uh, that's the reason why why uh, I, we got all this recognition because simply we're a, a, a team of radical optimists. Mm -hmm. So it's a choice for people to be cynical, for people to be critical, but I feel also that if you just uh, talk about the problems, you can also be part of the problem. So we are solution seekers and we are dreamers, but we are also builders of dreams. And that was the title of, uh, of my book, book, The Builder yeah. of Dreams. Correct. Because uh, there's just so much that uh, the Filipinos have given to the world in other countries. Yes. So I suppose it's important for the world to see that there's so much that we can do for our own country. Fantastic. Because, because we have no excuse to be poor, Maria. I mean, God, God has blessed us with so much. And, uh, the, and uh, we are poor simply because we keep leaving the poor behind. <laughs> so how would you describe the Philippines today? I feel that it's hope that will help us uh, rise as a nation is when we stop uh, uh, criticizing and, and putting down each other. So uh, we have what we call a build philosophy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, just connect with the good in people by always uh, given a bad situation, just bring out, you know, just, just uh, you know, give up the power of good, uh, bring out the power of goodness in yourself. So I guess uh, because uh, it's the greatness of this human spirit that we need to unleash. And there's so much of that. So when we see when we see this great devastation, we also great say great opportunities, you know, for for us to really uh, be transcendent above our own needs and to be able to just rise together. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, even in our, uh, our concept of sustainability, it's it's uh, to me just common sense economics that if we bring the bottom of the pyramid up, it will bring everything up. So in a sense, uh, we are now moving towards many of the calamity and conflict areas as a way of, first of all, restoring human dignity. Mm -hmm. uh, because poverty has made us uh, uh, lose confidence in ourselves. Yes. And, uh, and so we realize that in many of the typhoon areas that we have been uh, going to since we started out in 2003, 
it's been ty one typhoon after another, but it is also the tragedies that we have experienced that not, have not only brought out resiliency, but provided opportunity yes. for us to transform once ugly slums into now uh, beautiful and sustainable communities. So there's always a, a, a silver lining in such, the dark clouds. You have such boundless optimism. I mean, that, that is necessary. Let me throw some questions for you that are coming in on social media. What are Gawad Kalinga's short-term and long-term plans for the area struck by Haiyan? This is from uh, at Chrysostomo. Do you have a sustainable plan with a feasible layout? Yes. Uh, first of all, is uh, uh, we have to uh, build uh, communities for the typhoon victims, and we have to build them in in safe areas. Yes. So, like uh, we started out in uh, in Ormok in Tambulilid, we repaired many of the uh, homes that uh, whose uh, roofs were destroyed. You just go for the low, low hanging fruits. We also built uh, boats, but right now our goal is really uh, uh, you know building intentional communities. You know, in 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 areas that have been given geohazard uh, approval. Mm -hmm. So now we are also building extensively in uh, Tanawan. Yes. Our target is 1,200 homes, and uh, it was simply amazing. About I was there three months ago, yeah. and the president came to visit, and um, so he saw the power of uh, Bayanihan. Yes. So while it takes a while for many international organizations to get their act together, we realize it's the power of the people on the ground because you know the 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 beneficiaries of Gawad Kalinga before in Typhoon Sendong yes. are the ones now helping. The, 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 the typhoon victims of uh, Yolanda, of Haiyan. There's a lot of criticism about how slow the government has moved, not just uh, right after the storm, but even now it's been months, it's nearly a year after and there hasn't been enough done. How do you, one, do you agree with that and how do you, how do you deal with it? Well, I, 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 I believe that uh, from the start of the, of the tragedy, even before that the president uh, had done what no other president had done before, and which was, which was to really prepare the areas. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the impact of this typhoon was just beyond human imagination, mm -hmm. far greater than any typhoon that uh, other parts of the world have experienced. And so in a sense, because of the poor infrastructure that we had from way, way back, mm -hmm. you know, and so I think this government has inherited a lot of the neglect of the in you know in, in 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 you know of the corruption in in, in the past mm -hmm. so when we are faced with such uh, uh, an overwhelming calamity i just felt that you know everyone is doing his, his best and i guess you know the global attention we received was not simply because this was the strongest typhoon to hit us but it is simply because you know a lot of people just started to 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 not to wait for others but to do something correct so the from the very from the uh, poor, uh, from the members of uh, of uh, poor communities that were victims themselves, they started to help each other. But the international also community saw yes. our own uh, Bayanihan spirit, our own resiliency. Now I do see a lot of these inefficiencies simply because of the bureaucracy, because of uh, antique laws. Mm -mm. You know, yes. the, 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 in, the in, frustration. In, in, yeah, in, in, you know, and that's why when I was with the president in. In Leyte, you know, he immediately called uh, some agencies of the government regarding certain certain uh, rules in the past, like the 20% uh, you know uh, LGU equity that really slowed down the work. So we still have a lot of policies that have to be reviewed. Yeah. But to me, I think the desire was there in everyone to be able to really just uh, ease the suffering of our people. Um, this is from at POI Thoughts. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, what score will you give to the current administration on uplifting the lives of the people? I feel, I feel in terms of really desire and sincerity, I would say they would, it would be 9. Mm -hmm. But in terms of really actually being able to implement this, you know, it might be lower, not, not be simply because they have to deal with uh, a lot of institutional bureaucracy, mm -hmm. institutional corruption. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that uh, instead of really just simply depending everything on government and blaming everything on government, I think what is important now is that Filipinos are awake mm -hmm. and that uh, we will no longer just wait for foreign aid, we will no longer just wait for government, but we can do something in our own respective communities. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do something in our own towns and uh, I'm amazed with the Filipino 
Americans with other OFWs, they simply decided that if we come from from Gian, Giwan, then we help that town. Yes. If we come from from uh, Iloilo, from those uh, the the typhoon uh, areas uh, hit in Iloilo, then we help those towns. Mm -hmm. So we we saw that because yes. we're on the ground and. Uh, before the typhoon and after the typhoon, we were simply swamped with volunteers. We were swamped with uh, landowners donating a part of the land, you know, and we, and we just uh, were swamped with people from abroad wanting to do something. So I guess uh, we did not get involved in the, uh, we didn't wait for government yes. uh, aid to come, but we want to help government, you know, do its job. Um, in terms of, I, I'll, I'll jump off this question, just last night President Aquino talked about the possibility of a second term, charter change. How, how would you react to something like that? Well, I, well, I have great, uh, I have great uh, faith in, in President Aquino uh, and, uh, and uh, I felt that uh, he is the most underrated president, <laughs> you know, oh. and I think he's one of the smartest. But I think he is also a president with a lot of guts, you know. And then so uh, I would say that we leave it also to the people uh, who are his bosses. But I would say that whoever will be the next president, we will continue to work with them. Because we felt that we have our own duty as citizens to do our part. And not just always demand that, that other people do the job for us. There's another game changer in the country, and we talked about this very briefly. You said that you work with young people. Why do you like working with young people now? Yeah, simply because uh, we feel that we need a, a breath of fresh air. I, my, my, uh, I feel that the problems that we have today are, is simply because of uh, the way that we have been brainwashed in the last 350 years to, to think that uh, we're second class, to think that uh, that uh, we are good enough only to just be copycats of the genius of the West. I feel that young people now are starting to wake up and to realize that, hey, we, we have, the, the West has so much to learn from us, so that we, the Filipinos are starting to discover that Asia now is, is the new center of the universe, <laughs> that the Philippines now can be the place for innovation, and that uh, we will now show the world the genius of the East. Fantastic. And then the last game changer we, we talked briefly about was technology, social media. How oh. do you deal with this, Tony? Well, in the last five years, I felt the power of social media, the way that, that, uh, that Gawad Kalinga has grown, especially our initiative to build the first farm village university in the world in Angat Bulacan. Mm -hmm. And last Monday, we opened our college for, for experiential and entrepreneurial development, Seed Philippines. So it's the first college for social entrepreneurs. And we feel also now that this is the time that, uh, for Filipinos to really go for inclusive, uh, inclusive profit, for inclusive wealth creation and job generation, for us to really rise together, uh, you know, build a new economy that does not leave anyone behind. So in this sense, we should be the game changer. We should be also the trendsetter in the emerging economies of Asia. How do you stay so optimistic given the problems? Because I've seen the greatness of the spirit of our people, especially the poor, mm -hmm. that despite their poverty, they're so generous in sharing the only bed in their home, in sharing whatever little food they have. And despite the fact that they have known so much suffering, they still are a very happy and optimistic people. So we get about a lot of visitors, hundreds of visitors, mostly from Europe mm -hmm. and the United States. And they come to Gawad Kalinga to learn how to be happy. <laughs> because I, I, I do believe... <laughs> <That's good>. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is so much cynicism now yes. because of the uncertainty in the, the emerged countries yes. of Europe. I yes. was in Barcelona two years ago yes. and I was amazed how depressing the environment was. Yes. And about two months ago, I was in Madrid again. And uh, I, I, I saw that the former master of the Philippines you know, has their own, you know, they have their own share of problems that 50% of the graduates cannot find jobs. Mm. And, you know, when, when their economy right now is, is stagnating, we realize too that the brightest and the best among them are starting to look at Asia uh, to expand also their career yes. and business opportunities. And I keep telling them, I travel in the last uh, three years, I've been speaking in 31 universities in Europe, 
and I keep, you know, I just speak to them that, you know, Asia is not only China, it's also yes. the Philippines and Indonesia and other Southeast Asian countries that together we really have the richest natural resources and a lot of talented and creative people. So if they come to the Philippines, the French and the, uh, and the Dutch, they can help us uh, grow our, our, our cacao industry because they are addicted to our chocolates, yeah. but they don't grow a single cacao. But what is to me tragic is that, uh, that the Philippines imports 85% of our chocolate from countries that do not grow cacao. <laughs> you know, and so we just simply have to really wake up to the reality that we should be producing products that we import, mm -hmm. that our education should be graduating yeah. uh, Filipinos who will be uh, business owners, brand owners, uh, uh, wealth creators, job generators, and not job seekers. Yes. That we should be graduating producers and not simply consumers. And that is also, I saw the power of social media with human nature, which is our, we have been promoting a, a Filipino brand yes. that can compete with the, the best in the world, but using indigenous raw materials and also Filipino talents. And so now we have, uh, we have grown because of social media, we don't uh, go into mainstream advertising, yes. but it is really the power of quality and also good people behind the product and a very strong advocacy, <laughs> and which is pro-Philippines, pro-poor, and pro-environment. So we now, you know, this is now the power. This is now the, the season. This is now the age also for social business, you know, and that, that you know, people now are conscious about social impact. They yes. talk about now in, in uh, 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 the uh, impact on the environment. We talk about climate change vulnerability. We, t we talk about food insecurity. Yes. We talk about healthier products. So I myself, they, I come from a family where three members of my family died of cancer early. My eldest brother, 37. My second brother, 44. My sister, 33. So now we realize we have a predisposition to it. And oftentimes, it's triggered by what we eat, yes. what way we put on our skin. So now we have now come up with natural and organic products and not to, to be able to protect the next generation of Filipinos. And it is young people using social media. <laughs> <laughs> They're not compromised. <laughs> <laughs> They're, not, They're not trapped in a box. And so the whole goal now of Gawa Kalinga is to set the Filipino free, to define himself. Fantastic. This is the last question from social media, and it is a fitting last question from at Monchin de la Cruz. Um, Mr. Melotto, do you have plans to run for president of the country? <laughs> no, uh, uh, I am not called to be partisan, and that I will, that, uh, that uh, I realize that I, I realize that I value the power to serve my country, not to rule it. You know, and so uh, I also realize that uh, Real power is in not desiring power for myself. But I will work with government, and I can only connect with the good in government. You know, I, we will work with, uh, with, uh, with uh, schools. I'm particularly excited to work with the top universities in this country. And now my dream is to be able to provide education to the brightest and the best among our graduates of our public school, high schools, 85% of whom will not get a college education. And that's the reason why we opened our seed Philippines in Angat Bulacan, and we this is in partnership with TESDA, with with uh, with CHED, and we hope that we can replicate this all over the country. Maria, our dream in 10 years is to raise 500,000 social entrepreneurs that will help us end poverty for 5 million Filipinos. We can do it. Fantastic. 500,000 social entrepreneurs and poverty 20, for Filipinos yeah. by 2024. By 2024. Thank you. My gosh, fantastic. That is great. You must continue the conversation. Uh, we've been talking to Gawad Kalinga's founder, Tony Melotta. Tony, thank you for joining us on Talk Thursday, Civil Society's role, the future of the Philippines, the dreams that you need to turn into a reality. Follow him on, on Twitter at Tony Melotta. I'm Maria Ressa. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>